Hudson Biblow, a Catholic speaker and consultant from Canada. Hudson is joining us to discuss Bill C4, a law which has just been passed in Canada that is a conversion therapy law that has many Christians concerned because it reaches much farther than what it seems to be. Thank you so much for joining me, Hudson. Thanks for having me, Kim. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Can you explain to us what Bill C4 what it is and what it means for Catholics in Canada. Sure, uh, Bill C4 ha is billed as a conversion therapy bylaw, and I'm pretty sure that everyone would agree that uh, um, you know things designed to like turn someone straight or like to you know any of that stuff. You know, like we think of these horrible things people have been subject to. Um, nobody, nobody wants those things, and uh, I know people who've been who've suffered from those types of efforts. So um, that's what the bill, uh, that's what people think when they think about, when they hear the bill, but wow. the bill actually goes much further than um, efforts to change someone's orientation uh, or to change someone's attractions rather. Um, so that's kind of what I'd like to break open. Ultimately, I'd like everyone in the whole world to actually go and read the bill for themselves instead of just relying on, relying on you know, a headline or something like that. We need to take responsibility and read this here. And um, I, I do have the definition here from the uh, printed out here, but just what it does include is the conversion therapy is a, what the definition of the law says is a change in a person's sexual orientation to heterosexual, B change a person's gender identity to cisgender. So we can already see that this law uh, is completely steeped in the language of the culture. Wow. The, the language of the church is nowhere to be found. Uh, C, change a person's gender expression so that it conforms to the sex assigned to the person at birth. So even more worldly language. Uh, oh my gosh. And gender expression, that's an interesting one because uh, it's funny because a lot of the LGBTQ stuff that ha has been driven so far by perceptions of things falling outside of like hyper, hyper, hyper encased roles. You know what I mean? That little boy likes um, dance, so he must be a little girl. Like ah. those, you know what I mean? Like what is gender expression, right? There's a conversation to be had. Uh, D, repress or reduce non-heterosexual attraction or sexual behavior. And E, repress a person's non-cisgender ident gender identity. And F, repress a or reduce a person's gender expression that does not conform to the sex assigned at birth. So it, the, these are all what conversion therapy um, are, are defined as. And I mean, there's several problems with this kind of stuff in the fact that it basically, I mean, the, the stuff that everybody would agree with is that look like we're not trying to change gay people straight. We're not, we're not going there, you know, but we, as Catholics, as Christians everywhere, um, we want people to find Jesus and, and Jesus, <laughs> anyone who truly encounters him has their life rocked in some way, right? Now, the issue is that some people might say, oh, look, you're sharing your story about finding Jesus, but because your story includes you deciding for your own reasons to walk away from LGBTQ mindset, mm -hmm. mindset, um, because you changed your mind, basically, uh, never mind attractions, right? But you changed how you were thinking. Um, that in and of itself can be considered conversion therapy because, you know, if you are sharing a story like that, it might actually make someone else think more broadly about this topic too. And you know what the most dangerous thing in the world is, right? It's when people are thinking. Right? Right. And so if people are exposed to ideas outside of the narrative, they're going to think. They're going to say, hey, maybe like in my case, I was experiencing total despair while self-identifying as gay than trans. And like, wow, a new idea that I didn't have to see myself in those boxes. And I began to think and I was think for myself. I said, I don't want this anymore. And I was able to um, uh, like willfully depart from the mindset and at the same time incrementally opening my heart to Jesus through which I found greater hope peace, joy, freedom, love that I ever could have dreamed of experiencing before. And so, yeah, so it's, it's kind of tricky because like, uh, 
the church isn't out there trying to change people's attractions and the church isn't even out there trying to say hey you know what you're trans you need to turn from being trans it's interesting because i got i there was a hit piece done on me by a local newspaper when i ran for a political position and that was one of the subheadings of the headline said implying that i tell trans people to turn from being trans and i'm like i never have ever said that it's not anywhere on my website it's nowhere anywhere in my talks um, but um, I found out that in the case of like an immediate political need or there's a, 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 a news article um, a person in our country, it's actually permissible to lie and misrepresent because of the urgency of the matter and it being of a civic matter. So that was kind of a hit piece, frustrating, but it really isolated the biggest, one of the big things is that um, Christians, we call people to we propose the love of Jesus um, to all people in all respects, um, but the world will interpret that in any which way it does. Because, for example, like you know, like I did turn from the the LGBTQ mindset. I I walked away from a gay mindset. I walked away from transgender mindset, and in, in those things, it's also included all all sorts of ideas about what I thought might be fulfilling. Um, but uh, I did that, and so. It, that those sorts of things seem to be interpreted as as okay well you know asking someone to or proposing that someone open their hearts a little bit to Jesus is tantamount to the same thing as ordering them to turn from their attractions or their inclinations and mm -hmm. it's not at all it's it's like if it was and if those were the same things then maybe what the government should be doing is just straight up illegalizing the proposal to love Jesus I wish they would just go up front and say that wow. so that people wouldn't re people wouldn't think like the, the act would be over. Like it's obvious that the government is not friendly to the idea that people should be able to propose the love of Jesus, you know. Yes. And um, what are the consequences? So if somebody is found to be breaking this law, um, what, uh, what would happen? Well, um, I know that. I mean, it's all it's all written in the law and stuff, but there are things like, uh, from what I understand, is they could seize material, you know, they could, I don't know, come to your place and take stuff. Maybe that could be laptops or computers or to and then yeah. assess if things are conversion therapy. Right. And of course, if if they're not deemed to be conversion therapy, then they'll be returned, it says. But I mean, like, who needs that type of invasion of privacy? Do you know what I mean? Especially if someone thinks that like sharing a story. Is conversion therapy, and I, I've had a, one one particular LGBTQ activist who I know personally. Um, he's he told me that anything that is short of full promotion equals conversion therapy, and like there's there's nothing that'll satisfy his restless heart. And he's he's said horrible things like he he he, he wants the longs for the day when he can like persecute Christians. He said he was just to persecute Christians to the or prosecute with the law, prosecute Christians to the fullest extent of the law. But the thing is, when he sent that email, this is back a couple of years back, there wasn't a law in place to prosecute wow. Christians for sharing a story. But now there is. Yeah. It's Bill C-4, and it's these conversion therapy laws that are coming to your town, where it might not be a law that will stand up in the in the long term. And I'm not a lawyer, but I'm saying in the meantime, it's still going to like – you know, it could drag somebody through the mud pretty good. And uh, maybe these activists know that maybe it'll be financially fatiguing. Maybe it'll take a lot of time. Who knows, right? But at the end of the day, I think of it this way. How miserable does a person have to be to try to illegalize ways of thinking? You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. I have found peace, joy, hope, freedom, love. Like, I haven't found in the world. And it's certainly not in thinking of the days of embracing the idea that I'm gay or I'm trans because I was, I was to both of those places. Um, so I found a better place yet at the same time, it's like, like, like how, how I don't understand. I mean, I do understand that um, people don't want people to be exposed to that type of peace and joy and stuff like that, because then it's like, I don't know, like, it's like a numbers game. It's like, it'll get people thinking. That's it'll right totally breaks down their narrative. Well, it totally does, right? And I mean, and there's, I'm speaking towards like the activists who are wrapped up in this narrative. 
You know, there's lots of good people who are self-identifying as LGBTQ who are just trying to make sense of their lives just like everybody else, right? And they're they're not really in, engaged in high-level activism. But I mean, when you have high-level activists who are literally trying to make it illegal uh, or to create a chill effect, basically, where people are scared to share stories, we're scared to talk about it now. Well, mm -hmm. what 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 does that mean? That means that the prevailing voice will be the people who aren't scared, which is the people who typically will, are on side with the you know the movements of our time, yeah. right? So, so how does this it's wild. your mission? How how you know how are you gonna maneuver around this? Well, I think the number one thing is I'm I'm gonna be let's say m more intentional intentional um, mm -hmm. with little nuances of language for example like uh, basically I'm not going to change anything uh, I don't have to change anything because I never have done conversion therapy and I don't support conversion therapy and thank God the Catholic Church doesn't support conversion therapy but uh, I me and the church and psychologists everybody um, I think everyone in the whole secular world would also be okay with the idea of people having the uh, freedom and ability to ask questions as they try to navigate their sense of place in the world. That's what I think is great. Um, and I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but I don't really go and see people in like a counseling or a, a therapy session anyway, because I'm not a therapist, right? I'm not a doctor, I'm not a counselor. I'm just a guy who's, who has had the love of Christ impact his life. And I want to share my story so that other people might give Christ a chance, right? And uh, so I'm just going to keep plugging along, you know. Um, I know that the, the idea of a chill effect where people get scared, I know that's already taking root. Um, people, uh, they just don't want to get get thrown through the ringers of, of what this could look like legally. Um, but it's like, you know, you could, you could illegalize speaking about this topic, but it's never going to illegalize Christ. And that's the great thing. Like the author of all law can't be overwritten by human huh. law. It's, okay. So whatever, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of hilarious to watch the, the push to try to silence um, those who've tasted the impactful love of Christ because it's like, well, we know that it's not, that no human law is going to do it, right? If anything, it's just going to just continue to make people who are angry at those who have found Christ, it's just going to reveal their anger and resentment. And I kind of think that's a good thing. There is a lot of resentment. There's a lot of resentment towards people who have discovered the truth of Jesus Christ. Tons of resentment, you know, because it's like it's counter to the narrative. It broadens mm -hmm. people's thinking, you know, it it challenges us, right? And let let the resentment be revealed, you know. I, I, maybe maybe it's good that that's happening, you know. And, this and hopefully, like a, a hatred almost. Um... There, there, I, I can't think of his name now, but there's a guy that detransitioned. Um, he's been on a lot of um, podcasts and, 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 and talk shows. I, do you know of him? I can't think of his name now. Are you talking about Walt? Yes, Walt. Yeah, Walt. Yeah, yeah super awesome dude. Uh, yeah, he seems so, and his story is, is quite amazing. Um, he gets a lot of hate. He gets a lot of hate. Yeah. From you know what's even... You know what's even scarier is that um, because there's a new way of thinking that's sort of like percolating in our secular world, which is basically like if you you can feel bullied even if someone's not intending to bully, right? Mm -hmm. So you're a bullying victim even if there's no intention. So now you have people whose circumstantial existence is offensive. So my existence, Walt's existence, that is offensive to people who have bought in uh, to the mindsets that speak other words uh, otherwise about humanity, right? Mm -hmm. It's offensive. It's straight up offensive. And um, so there's there is this perceived justification. Well, we're being it's not necessarily bullying, but like you telling your story is offensive. Therefore, we have justification to stop you at all costs. Now, what does that look like in the eyes of one person versus another? I don't know, but I do know that resentful vengeance can arise after vengeance or sort of after resentment takes root. And so for whatever reason, we have people who like anger is an important emotion in, in the world, right. right? 
anger can be channeled to righteous goodness. You know, we're going to do something good on account of something. Um, but I mean, what is good? And if outside of a world that understands sin, everyone's perception of good is going to be all over the map. Well, some people's perception of good is to eradicate voices, you know, say, you know, your existence is offensive. Your existence causes me emotional abuse. Ah. Your yeah. existence causes me emotional violence, that kind of stuff. And like, that's how things are tipping in our world. Right. And so it's not even, it's not even that I'm going out there and doing something. It's that it's just being right. And so I want, <laughs> we should pray for the whole world to like be protected from that poisonous mindset that removes the dignity and worth of the human person by ignoring the person's intentions. That's big. That's bigger than this LGBTQ topic. Mm. But I say that because, well, what are my intentions? My my intentions aren't to throw salt on the wounds of people. It's not to like dive into the you know dig around at LGBTQ yeah. activists. I'll present the facts. The activists said that the um, anything short of uh, full promotion was uh, conversion therapy, mm -hmm. and so like we know that there are people who have these sorts of views. Um, and so I'm just presenting those and saying, well, you know, it, the fact that you have these views, well, the world is tipping to the point of saying, well, because enough of these people have these views, then it is justified to silence these other people or to, to, to suppress the stories. Right. And, and I mean, you know, it's just a flashy example of the fake tolerance that exists. But at the end of the day, you know, like I look in my mirror and and I got to live with myself and say, did I do the right thing? Yeah, I tried my best to share the love of Jesus Christ. I wasn't I wasn't out there resentfully prodding at any at people. I want everybody in the LGBTQ movement, especially to come to know the, the love of Christ, the peace, the interior peace. That's what I really want. You know, um, mm -hmm. I'd have to uh, like hate anyone to want them to not come to find that, you know, and that's bigger than this whole topic altogether, you know? And so, I mean, I, I, my own life is an example of, of the, the importance of people trying to make sense of themselves so they can find their way. And uh, I know that that's the whole of humanity is in that boat in some way or another. Right. And I know that uh, proposing Christ, um, hopefully with the lived example of my life, um, that's probably the best thing that I can try to do. And on that note, though, I think it's very important to for everyone to realize that um, right now, like, so I strive to live a holy and chaste life. And I struggle, you know, it's that's everybody struggles with that. But people also think that chastity is the same as celibacy and abstinence. And they're totally not all the same thing. Like celibacy is the state of not being married. You know, abstinence is about behavior and chastity is the state of the heart. Did you know a person can be celibate but not abstinent, abstinent but not celibate, chaste, chaste but not abstinent, abstinent but not chaste, celibate but not chaste, and chaste but not celibate, right? If, if people knew that, it's like, okay, yeah, we really need to break these terms open so we can make sense of them, right? But, yeah. but the big thing is that celibacy and abstinence can be imposed, but chastity being a matter of the heart cannot be imposed. And this, I think, is really important because... For as long as people don't understand chastity, they will link it together with celibacy and abstinence too tightly. And then the, the perceived imposition of celibacy and abstinence will be carried onto chastity. And thus the whole world pretty much as it already does see is that chastity itself is an imposition. It's an imposition of the church. Right. The truth of the matter is that chastity is a proposition. The church proposes that we strive to align our hearts to desire uh, alignment with what God has authored into creation, and that happens to be in the f in the physiological realm pertaining to sexuality. Of course, that includes uh, successful integration of our sexuality, which includes the uh, complementarity of male and female on a physiological level, and also the physiological truth that human species is sexually dimorphic, this males plus females. Of course, if Aliens came to pull two people from planet Earth to go populate some other planet. They would take a male and a female. Exactly. As their only hope. Okay. I mean, like, okay. So anyway, but people have to like break open chastity. They have to understand chastity. 
um, and in, but, but, but if they don't, it's more than book knowledge, right? Why on earth would someone want to know chastity if their perception of Catholics is like, you know, grouchy, white knuckled celibates, right? Yeah. It's like, we need people to understand the beauty of living the truth of God's plan for sexuality. So much so that they might say, wow, you know, there's something about you. There's something about you that I wish I had in my life. And, you know, and then we crack open those conversations. And of course, God's showering people that you. And we can keep praying for graces to be showered upon the world too. Because really, you know, God's got all of this in his hands. He's got yeah. you in, my, in his hands, me, all the activists. God has all the activists in the palm of his hand permitting all of this stuff to happen. He even has our prime minister in the palm of his hand, you know? Uh, and this is exactly though what they're, they're trying to suppress um, with, this, with this bowl. Um, how has the church... The Catholic Church in Canada responded. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't speak on behalf of the Catholic mm -hmm. Church is responding. Um, right. I'm only for this whole thing. I'm only speaking on behalf of myself. Right. Um, what I have learned is that um, as far as I can tell, uh, people are just going to soldier on like normal. Like I said, okay. the Catholic Church doesn't endorse conversion therapy, you know, um, but, you know, there are there are concerns I've heard from people who say, like, you know, suppose I'm in the counselor type role and I am going to, you know, try to point someone towards, let's say, the idea of um, the Catholic sexual ethic. Um, that in and of itself in that role could be deemed as illegal. So the 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 rumbling so to speak or that there's a lot of people who are like kind of knowing that time is ticking down before they're you know might get hauled off to prison basically you know wake up call world you know but it's kind of like i don't experience i don't i don't see experiencing fear like what's what organization does right the government who stands for with uh stands for all sorts of uh, horrific things like, you know, euthanasia and abortion and everything like that. We should just expect that the policies pertaining to, you know, human conduct and sexuality will also be, you know, uh, morally compromised. We should just expect it. And the thing is, like, people who are committed to evil don't just wake up one day and say, oh, I'm done being evil. You know, right. they just keep pushing. That's why things just get pushed and further and further. So it's like, do we, do we, like, do we know what's going to happen? Of course not. Could God step in and totally straighten things out? Like, totally he could. But maybe, uh, maybe in Canada we're due for some suffering, you know? And maybe, like, and this is what the, what the other side doesn't understand. And I mean the other side. I mean the people who are resentful towards the Catholic Church. And that even includes people inside the Catholic Church. They don't realize that every piece of suffering can be used as a, as a, as an offering of a gift, a penitential offering to God for the salvation of souls and for the reduction of the duration of time in purgatory. Souls. All of these things lead to the greatest spiritual benefits. Right. So <laughs> it's just, we're just in cycles right now, you know? Yes. So what's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but we have the peace of knowing uh, how this all fits in in our faith. So I'm not troubled. Sure, I'm like, oh, I wonder if the feds are going to, like, pound on my door tomorrow because that's one of the days and just, I don't know what they're going to do. But it's like, yeah. sure, throw me in prison. It's not going to trouble my heart because I know that Christ is my king. And I think a lot of Catholics, you know, well, I certainly expect persecution most of the time. Um, you know, not that I, I, I enjoy it or welcome it, but you kind of expect, especially in these these days, um, yeah. you persecution. And like you said, we can offer our suffering up. So Hudson, do you think this this law or this bill will other countries, other parts of the world will take it on? Yeah, I'm pretty positive that most. Uh, I mean, in any other place is people 
sure in these places, you know, are as awake as, as awake as they can be before it happens so that they're not caught flat footed. I think there's a lot of people caught flat footed saying, what do we do? What do we do? Especially because some people say things like LGBTQ people are called to celibacy. They're called to absence. Well, guess what? Those sorts of calls are probably going to be illegal because you're calling someone to modify behavioral things. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, hey, like that's going to be against the law, right? So instead of those things, we want to not be caught flat footed and say things like, well, we're not calling anybody that because we, we, we don't. It's too short sighted of a call. It's too below uh, the most important things, which is the spiritual realm which uh, that's where we need to focus first and foremost. And through that, we have the proposal of chastity. And I explained chastity earlier. We propose chastity for all people. And of course, if people want to open their hearts to that, that's fantastic. And if they don't, then that's their prerogative and they have the freedom to do so. Um, These laws are seemingly coming closer to legalizing the proposition of chastity. And yeah, I, I can't see them not spreading because it's what the people want, but the people, um, we have a we have a whole world that doesn't know what sin is. Sin oh. is if it if it feels good, it's not a sin, and we have a whole world that's rejected the moral teaching, of the moral authority of the Catholic Church to define sin. I mean, you know, Catechism eighteen forty nine, sin is a rejection of truth, truth, truth in in, in itself. And I mean, part of that is what God has written into creation, and part of that is the hu- hu- human bodies and oh. the, the sexual complementarity and all that stuff. So, but we have a world that rejects all that stuff. So, obviously, the world is going to vote these things in. Like, I mean, it didn't have to get forced. I think that there was um, it was a unanimous thing in our in favor of this. And of course, you're bound in the exploration of ideas or coming clo- pretty close to it at least enough so that many people are scared of sharing ideas that could uh, buck the narrative. Right. So yeah, it's coming. Just be ready. For it. <laughs> so this affects the universal church. I mean, a lot of people I'm sure are thinking that like, it's happening in Canada. It doesn't really affect me. You know, it's, it's not, you know, shame for them, but it's not something I really need to be panicking about. Um, but as you've just said, it affects the universal church and it's something that we all need to care about and be aware of. Yeah, I like what you said the word panic. Nobody needs to panic about this stuff. Interestingly, so this has, the letter of this law has effectively done the same illegalization of Orthodox Judaism and Islam. And like, are they panicking? Are they worried? No, probably. I don't don't know because I'm not on the inside of these communities, but maybe we can take a page out of the playbook of those who aren't worrying about it at all and just being, all right, this is our time to buckle down and just raise very intentional families, intentional connections. You know, we want to make sure that our, our kids see themselves first and foremost as, as Catholic and that they see the riches and beauty of the faith. And they want to continue that as they grow up. And I mean, like I used to teach inside an Islamic school and I don't talk about this too much. But one of the things that I learned there was that those children were raised to desire to grow into their faith. That's what the young men did. They were, and the faith was structured in a way that was victorious, like it was attractive to them. Wow. It was quite a contrast to a lot of the like Mickey Mouse baby Christianity stuff that I see. Mm-hmm. I just shake my head. I'm like, all you're doing is sending these young men elsewhere to become men. Right. Yeah. So we have to be aware of how we're presenting Christianity. <laughs> Islam as, as the, um, the the winning team, right? So the preface to the Quran talks about the winning conquests of Muhammad and stuff, and that's fair. It's right there, and um, but but our our faith, Christianity, is often shown Jesus as being like a nice guy, like someone you don't want to follow into battle, like you know he's just yeah. kind of a nice guy, right? Yeah. And it's like th- those aren't helping, right? I don't think those are helping us. Um, just express the full truth of the true victory of Christ, not only victory in, in this in this world, but like you know, a spiritual world to all of creation. If we have specific intentionality of helping people understand that Christianity truly is the winning team, I mean that would would be helpful, I think, because. Yeah, and then stop panicking. Let's pour our focus into that and 
it is what it is. We know that evil will always be around. And we know that if, what does they say? It's like if religion, if religious people um, go like step out of government, government's going to step into religion, yeah. you know? And here we yeah. have government trying to mandate religion. Here we are. We're, we're decades into this. It does. It's not going to, it's not going to reverse. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. But um, no panic, no panic. You mentioned um, sort of Catholics raising their kids with intention. So with this with this bill, um, does it have any ramifications for kids who have been raised in the faith with intention? And if they if those children have to go to school, for instance, and speak of their faith and speak to the other children um, about about what they know to be true would those parents sort of be in trouble or you know i haven't thought about that too much but uh yeah if if, if uh, i suppose it's not out of reach for one kid to say that another kid is offensively representing um christianity or 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 possibly even doing something worthy of the complaint according to this law you know, um, and of course, who knows, maybe they'll uh, take the child out of the parents home. We know that stuff's already happening in, term, in terms of like parents who are not affirming a child in their um, gender perceptions. We, that's old news already, sadly. I mean, on that note, <laughs> like, like when I first was like thinking that I was a girl, I also thought I could move a rail car by pushing it. You know what I mean? So I know my my. My mindset was, uh, let's say, a, the, the mindset of a child, right? Uh, but, you know, you're not allowed to challenge those things. So, yeah, I anticipate that the government's going to keep meddling and, and, and you know, causing suffering within families. Like, why wouldn't they, right? It just okay. seems to be yeah. like the natural progression in this uh -huh. total wicked, wicked governmental kind of policy. Totally wicked. Um, Evil. So what, what what can people do? Is there? Oh, I mean, I suppose there's nothing we can really do. I mean, that's your government. That's sort of law now. But what what can people do? Is there anything people can do to help sort of Canadian Catholics? Um. Well, obviously prayer and fasting for sure. And today is the first Friday, right? So like devotions. Um, you know, prayer and fasting, and you know that really is to transform the whole world. Uh, and and with the prayer intention that we can, let's say, manage our sufferings uh, with the grace of God to provide the, the most maximal spiritual benefit to this world. I think that's the greatest gift that the world could offer to us right now. Because quite frankly, um, I don't know. I, I, that's the most important thing is that we learn how to take our suffering in ways that will be befitting of growing the kingdom of God. Right. Also, <laughs> talk to people so that, you know, so people are aware of things and, and break people away from this idea of, well, it's not in my backyard, so I don't have to think about it. Well, exactly. you know, people were saying that about this topic for years and years and years, and then suddenly children are being taken away from parents because the one parent's not affirming them a certain way. And people are saying, where did this come from? Yeah, it's like, well, it came from people saying, this doesn't affect me. And now it does affect you. And your grandchildren are being taught drag queen story hour. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're and you're getting infect, infected in the head by some activist teacher and blah, 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 right? It's it, because people for long enough said it doesn't impact me, so I don't need to touch it. Exactly. And how long did this bill actually, I mean, how long, how long did it take to get to today? Oh. Was it a long process? No, 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 no. <laughs> so uh, in, in a surprise turn of events, so the bill was killed because of the Canadian election. So it was Bill C-8 and C-6 and then it died. Like it, it, it passed with, with, with some opposition mm -hmm. and then it died. But then with a new term coming in, it was actually uh, proposed by by the the other party, which surprised everybody. And I'm not sure what the reasons are, but mm -hmm. whatever. Anyway, it passed like like that wow. like in a snap, right? Uh, yeah, and it's just kind of like oh, okay then. <laughs> so yeah, 
how, how much time do we have before? Uh, and I, as far as I know, like the other versions were complaint based, meaning that all it would take is for someone to complain and say, this guy's doing conversion therapy and then you've got to deal with it, right? So, and I already know that there's, like I said, there's activists who think anything is, anything is, uh, anything other than straight promotion is conversion therapy. So, you know, all it would take is an active, activist-minded individual to say, I don't like this person, so I'm going to claim conversion therapy because I don't like what they're saying. And then they'll just drag that person through the ringer. So, here we are. <laughs> And does this apply now? So like you've obviously got content online, you've been doing this for a while. So does this apply to your stuff only going forward? Or could tomorrow somebody sort of go on your website and say he's doing he's been doing conversion therapy, you know, and report you? Yeah, or? yeah from what I understand, um, what I understand is that they could, um, you know, if they seize my property to like examine things and of mm -hmm. course they're going to examine it through a secular lens and not understand the catholicity of it all so i'm going to get okay. whatever get my stripes through this um yeah they have the ability to demand that files are deleted um all that kind of stuff so but they can't delete christ that's the great news right so so who knows, right? And and those are, I mean, but I mean, a lot of the things that I have, I don't even own them, right? Like I've done an interview here or there. It's, I don't even know who's hosting it. It's out there in the universe. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do about that. But truly, like, I think it would be um, a disservice to even be worried about it too much because, look, there's so many people out there in the world who are just sharing how their lives have been touched by Christ. Even if 100% of my stuff got wiped off the internet tomorrow, the, the momentum of the of people who are waking up to the infinite and perfect love of Christ and who are walking away from particular mindsets, uh, I mean, that's not going to stop. I mean, so, that's yeah, like, we'll see done. what happens. I, guess. Um, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I do want to find out from you if there is an active LGBTQ um community in the church in canada um and how have they responded I, I mean um lgbtq catholics not not secular, secular. Oh, like, well i mean i have to i i'd want to know what do you mean by that right like there's people <laughs> lgbtq identifying defining who call themselves catholics and who are pushing against the church things like your new ways ministries kind of right, stuff like your James right <laughs> right um, resentful against the teachings of the church when it comes to chastity right. resentment 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 it is like a predictable marker right you got that and then you have a lot of catholics who are just simply trying to they don't know they're they're, they're earnestly searching that's great god's grace is working and then you have people who have already decided to choose to live chastely uh, because they've tasted the peace, love, and joy, and hope, and freedom. Um, I think that, as far as I know in Canada, the community of the latter, the people who are already striving to live faithful lives, um, those those people are already, like, living full tilt, like, for the Lord as best they know how. Right. So, I mean, as far as the people who are resentful against the Catholic Church, the teachings of the Church, um, you know, they're going to keep doing what they're doing a lot of the times, which includes sowing further resentment, exactly. trying to get other people to believe less and less in the moral teaching authority of the church. So it's just kind of more of the same, you know, predictable, more of the same. Exactly. And is that is that sort of new ways ministry type group? Is that quite large in Canada of Catholics? I, I, I don't I don't know. I don't. Okay. I know that there's people who are in line with that ways of thinking, but I mm -hmm. I have given that zero percent of my life to even be bothered with. Um, mm -hmm. I know that they're out there, and I know that it would be fantastic if they had a conversion of heart and tasted the true joy of chastity and became a champion for that too. So that's ultimately my <laughs> my involvement with that is at a, at a distance through prayer through the cross. There's always hope. Um, There's all yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we will continue to pray for you, and I'm going to put your details.
below this video so that people know where exactly to find you. Um, but thank you so much, and we're praying for you. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> Crazy times. God bless you. God bless.